Assalamualaikum, Zau An. This is the part 1 of chapter 6, Support, Movement and Grow. Let's start with support, movement and growth in animals. The skeleton is the supporting structure of an organism. There are three different types of skeletons. Endoskeletons, exoskeletons, and hydrostatic skeletons. Endoskeleton is a cartilaginous or mineralized support structure inside the body. For example, in humans and vertebrates, this skeleton consists of internal bones and cartilage. Endoskeleton plays a role in supporting the body weight, providing body shape, and protecting the internal organs such as the heart and lungs which are protected by the ribcage. The muscles attach directly to the skeletal bones to allow for movement and support. An exoskeleton is an external skeleton that supports and protects most invertebrates such as prawns, crabs, spiders, scorpions, and insects. The skeleton is non-living and consists of a cuticle strengthened by chitin, a substance secreted by the epidermis. It acts as a hard outer covering which we often call large exoskeletons as shells. The functions are almost the same as the endoskeleton. Hydrostatic skeleton. A hydrostatic skeleton is a structure found in many cold blooded and soft bodied invertebrates such as flatworms, roundworms, earthworms, starfish, and jellyfish. It consists of a muscular wall that encloses the body cavity that is filled with fluid. The muscles in the body act against the fluid and in doing so bring about movement. It is lightweight, fluid shape, cushions the internal organs from shock and helps in the movement, allows them to force their way various regions of rock and soil surfaces. Terrestrial vertebrates have a big skeletal frame. Just look at an elephant, the body weight is supported by the strong pectoral gaddle and pelvic gaddle, which both are joined with the legs. The pectoral gaddle is also known as the shoulder gaddle. Aquatic vertebrates have a small skeletal frame. The pectoral gaddle and the pelvic gaddle are small and weak but it is not a problem as their body weight is supported by the buoyancy force of water. That's why an aquatic vertebrate such as the whale can grow larger than its skeleton size. Birds also have a small skeletal frame. The bones are light and hollow. Muscles join with flat and white sternum bone or breast bone that is adapted for flying. Exoskeleton and growth. Most invertebrates are made up of hard chitin and are unable to expand. Non-living skeleton does not grow with the invertebrates. Since the exoskeleton restricts growth, ecdysis is required to accommodate for increases in the size of the animal. Ecdysis is the periodic shedding of all cuticles and the subsequent formation of the new one. The animals suck in air to expand their bodies and break the old hot skeleton. 
a new soft skeleton is formed below the old skeleton. The animal is vulnerable when it is in the ecdysis process because the new skeleton is very soft until the new exoskeleton has dried and hardened throughout the rapid growth of the invertebrates. When the growth curve of all organisms is sigmoid in shape, animals with exoskeleton have a different story. The growth of cockroach and grasshopper can be seen in stages. Yes, it is a step-shaped growth graph. The journey point of each stage is referring to the ecdysis or shedding process. These are the moments where a new skeleton is formed. The vertical part of the graph shows growth that occurs rapidly. Meanwhile, the horizontal part 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 shows the zero growth stage, and it is called the instar. At these stages, the animals will eat a lot to build new tissues as well as to increase their body weight. We are already done with the endoskeleton and exoskeleton. It's done for hydrostatic skeleton and its movement. Have you ever seen an earthworm move on the ground? Sometimes the segments on the body will become long and at the same time the other segments will become short, right? The earthworm has a hydrostatic skeleton, which means its body cavity is filled with fluid. The earthworm moves on land with the help of chetai, that is the bristles found at the side of its body. There are two types of muscles on the walls of the earthworm's body, known as the circular muscles and longitudinal muscles. The muscles in the earthworm act antagonistically when the longitudinal muscles contract and the circular muscles relax, the body segments of the earthworm will shorten and thicken. The chetai at this segment will grip the ground. At the same time, when the circular muscles contract, the longitudinal muscles relax. That will result in a thin and long body segment. The chetai at this segment will release the grip to allow the body to lighten and move forward. So, how to memorize this opposing movement of the earthworm easily? Simply by using the word long. Long for longitudinal muscles. When the longitudinal muscles relax, the body segment will become long. This result in the chetai to release the grip. All of the steps of consequences can be simplified by remembering this. During long vacation, I can fully relax and release my tension. Thank you.